Happy Valentine's Day. Romance. Talking about romance. Romantic. Talking about a word. It's romance. Eh. Okay. Romantic. So what does romance mean? Hmm. Talking about romance? We've been talking about building a story. And what better time than Valentine's Day to bring up the idea of romance. Romance. If you look at the history of the word romance, first of all, it's used to describe a language that certain things were written in. And then it's used to categorize a kind of story or writing, uh, usually that involved adventure, a noble, passionate kind of love. It involved somebody going after something great, a greater purpose, a great supernatural cause. You know, that over time, we see stories like Don Quixote written, which are actually making fun of the romance ideas. Really what we see come into uh, European and American, the Western culture, is a cynicism that picks away at the ideas that were held in high esteem in the romance period. Those ideas of heroism, those ideas of nobility, of honor, actually the things that even now we're still looking around for, the things that draw many young men and women to gang environments, the brotherhood, the honor, that sense that you're part of something bigger than yourself. There's such a hunger right now in the young people and a draw towards uh, Japanese culture because of that samurai romantic part of the culture that was there, whether it's there now or not, you know, that doesn't really matter. People are looking for something. They're searching for this, this idea that's encapsulated in the word romance. There's something inside of us with a voice that constantly says, there's more than this. There's something bigger. There is a greater purpose and plan in motion. There are things that we can't see. There are things that we can't touch. There are things that we can't fully understand that are happening around us. I want to read a quote to you from Bertrand Russell. Uh, he was an atheist from 1872 to 1970. And listen to this. That man is the product of causes which had no provision of the end they were achieving. That his origin, his growth, his hopes and fears, his love and his beliefs are but the outcome of accidental collocations of atoms. That no fire, no heroism, no intensity of thought and feeling can preserve an individual life beyond the grave. That all the labors of the ages, all the devotion, all the inspiration, all the noonday brightness of human genius are destined to extinction in the vast death of the solar system. And that the whole temple of man's achievement must inevitably be buried beneath the debris of a universe in ruins. He goes on to say, only on the firm foundation of unyielding despair can the soul's habitation henceforth be safely built. Wow, what a thinker, what a poet. Amazing the way he's put these words together to describe what is summed up as unyielding despair. What a foundation to live in. Unyielding despair. I, I don't live in this world. And actually, there's a, another quote I want to read you, and this is from J.P. Moreland, and it's, Absent of objective and ultimate meaning, like in the quote we just read, purpose and value, there can be no real drama in the thin world. However, people are made in the image of God, whether or not they acknowledge it, and the hunger to be part of some dramatic purpose bigger than they are will not go away. Coming back to the idea of the romance within our story, and when I say romance, I'm referring to the grand adventure the supernatural storyline within our book. This is what we were made for. This is what we were created for. This is why there's something inside of us. When God breathed life into us and made us, there's still that seed inside of us crying out for more, crying out for the eternal, crying out for the supernatural. And I want to challenge us this week to really think about where is the adventure in my life. That thin world, as stated in the second quote I read to you guys, is a pervasive worldview that's being blanketed over us, especially in the United States, telling us that there is nothing more than this. 
How boring, how sad is that idea? How much greater is the longing within us? And will we rise up and respond to that longing and that drive inside of us saying, there is more, there is more than your daily routine of checking in and checking out. There is more than this job that you go to every day. There's more than waking up and eating your cereal, drinking your coffee, and then going back to bed in 12 hours. There is more. You were made for more. And it's already been written and is available to you if you only are willing to say yes to the adventure.